Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, Envy. I don't know where the hell Envy went, but we got a special guest on the line. I wish she was in studio, but Zoom will have to do. And she, she is 100% that bitch. Yep. Period. <laughs> Angela said that, not me. Okay. <laughs> you don't sound like me. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's woman privilege. I don't say things like that. Okay. But uh, she's got a new single out, Rumors, featuring Cardi B. Lizzo, what's happening? What's happening, Ma? I'm so excited to be here. I wish I could be there in person, but we got to stay safe right now, y'all. I know. I don't feel very safe, to be honest. I'm up here, but, you know. Listen, it's it, there were some close calls. There were right. some close COVID calls. And so I'm like, I'm locked back down. I'm back in the house. This is my house right here. You These ain't my Grammys. Oh, look at the Grammys. Look at them Grammys. Okay, oh, okay, awards. We see you. But look at that hair. You ain't doing too much social distancing because you didn't do that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know the Beyonce baby hair Shelby Swain did this. You see it say rumors. I love oh, that's it. Hard. Oh, that's wow, so wow, dope. Wow, wow. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Wow. Look at Listen, <laughs> by the way, so we got a sneak peek of the song because you know we world premiere rumors on iHeart and I love it. You know, I'm a big Lizzo fan and I'm like, when is she putting out some new music? So I was excited for the announcement. Yay, me too. This is a long time in the making for me. But you know, I don't like to rush nothing. You know what I mean? I don't force nothing. I took my time with it and I made the best music I possibly could before I came back. And it's perfect because you addressed all the rumors because first of all, we hear you're pregnant by Chris Evans. So congratulations, <laughs> girl. And you having Captain America, Thank baby? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having little America. <laughs> I wish I could have added that to the song. That rumor just kind of started. I should have added that. I'm going to do rumors part two. <laughs> you know, I, I do want to ask you, though, you know, how, how have you been? Like, you know, how how, how you been maintaining your, your mental and emotional well-being during this crazy ass time? Um, I've, I've been okay. Like, I'll tell you what, I was anxious for a long time. Anxious because the world was mm -hmm. stressing me out, but also anxious because when we went into lockdown, I have been used to consistently working since 2012, mm -hmm. consistently touring, doing press in the studio, whatever. And to do nothing was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I here? <laughs> and I had to realize I had to turn all of this external anxiety and energy inward on myself. And I really had time to face a lot of things like becoming famous in the last two years. You know, I'm grown. <laughs> so I had to like, I was used to my life before all of this. So I needed to really settle into being famous, who I am and, and what I've accomplished. You know, we don't even have time to celebrate our accomplishments. I'm like, bitch, you got Grammys. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have BET awards. You have awards. Like, you've done it. You know, sit back and enjoy that. And I have been. I would think that, you know, in the Bible, it says, uh, you know, be still and know that I am God. I would think that that's what happened for you. Like, you know, like you said, you've been working since 2012. But had, did you ever sit yeah. down and realize, damn, I'm Lizzo now. I'm not, the, you know, I'm not the same <laughs> person I was. I haven't had time, but it's interesting you say that because the morning of the Grammys, all I, I just I listened to gospel music. I listened to Fred Hammond and I just was I relished in gratefulness. You know, I mm -hmm. laid down on my little love sack and I just mm -hmm. wept and I just was praising God. That's one of the few times I get moments of stillness, though. It's just been go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know that, you know, I follow you on social media, so I'm always paying attention to everything that you're saying and doing. So I know sometimes being famous is not that easy. People might think, oh, it's, you know, she's got money. She's got this. She's got that. Mm -hmm. But you've definitely had your trials and tribulations. So mm -hmm. how has that been for you? Man, money don't buy everything. And fame ain't everybody's end goal. It wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. Shit. You know, I wanted to be successful. My definition of success I had already reached, like I was taking care of my family. I was touring. I was grossing a million dollars on my tour on my own. I was like, <laughs> I'm making great music. I did that. This fame shit is, is um, a part of what my purpose is. Cause my purpose I always feel like is to make music that touches the world and helps people. And I'm like, you can't not be famous and do that. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, what was your question? I was, <laughs> was going to say, you know, that's interesting because people always try to say, oh, well, people know what comes with it. But I also feel like on the flip side, sometimes you just have a talent that you want to share with the world and you're not doing it to be like on Instagram and on Twitter. And unfortunately right. now, sometimes that does, you know, it's a good thing.
thing and it's a bad thing, but it's not like right. you're uh, being an artist just to be like on social media and have people comment mm -hmm. on you because they feel like just because you're an artist, people could just say or do anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely part of this new generation though that it, you know is social media heavy. Like you have to be on your social media because the fans, it's like, there's no middleman anymore. It's just us and the fans. And the fans are really dictating and moving the industry. So social media is a huge part. And I, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I be fucking with people on social media. Like TikTok is, I'm on TikTok all the time just fucking with people. Like I use it to my <laughs> advantage. I feel like, you know, I don't need social media. Social media need me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think you can be too, too, too inside it though? And what I mean by that is, Sometimes I hear you address rumors that I haven't even heard. Like when you talked about the the, <laughs> the stage diving thing, I never had heard that nowhere. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Um, I I was I would get little tiny comments. I would get maybe three or four comments like every so often. I'd be like, apologize for what you did. I'm like, what do y'all talk about? It was like, did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> he was a fan and you killed him. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And it was this little tiny, like micro aggressive, annoying thing that I dealt with. And, you know, leading up to rumors, I just decided to, to own it. You know, I took it, I, I'm taking it back. You know what I'm saying? I'm reclaiming it. For me, it was just funny to kind of air something like that out because it was so absurd. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I tell everybody, man, you know, I, I read this quote the other day that was great. And it was, uh, I used to want to protect my name in situations. Now I just want to protect my peace. I let whoever think whatever. So you got to get to that mm. point, Lizzo. That's deep. Yeah, but also... It's like I'm using it constructively. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I could have been clapping back at people on the internet for the last two years, but I chose to put it in a hit song and make some money. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I love That's it. Right. And I saw the picture with Cardi. First of all, how was it working with Cardi? Was it this was the person that you were like, okay, my next single, I need Cardi on here. Tell me how this all happened. I've been wanting to work with Cardi since the day she signed to Atlantic Records. When the ink dried on that contract, I said, please put me on a song with her. I thought she was so funny. I thought she's a superstar. And I really, you know, like I said, I don't rush nothing. She don't rush nothing. We just waited for the right time, the right moment, the right song. And after I wrote rumors, I wrote rumors back in February. And after that, I was like, hmm, like I wait, I write the song first. And then I let the song ask for a feature. Sometimes the songs don't ask for features. Cause I like to complete a song so it's good on its own. And rumors was good, but it was like, I need Cardi B. <laughs> I need Cardi. And it made it great. Um, I sent her the record and she was like, I love it. I love the record. And, you know, due to COVID, we couldn't physically be together. So we did it over FaceTime. And, you know, she get all kinds of rumors about her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All kinds of misconceptions in the media. And she always clapped back. So I said, let me put the clap back queen on a record with me. <laughs> I wonder if having all these rumors and lies <clears throat> said about you has changed your perspective of celebrity. Because we all have different perspectives mm -hmm. of celebrity when we on the outside. And you get in a little bit and, you know, it might change what you believe about other people. Did that, did that, did that happen to you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like <laughs> the funniest thing to me be like, these Illuminati That's right. things that people say. I'm like, y'all, if y'all only knew, ain't no damn Illuminati in this level of the industry. Like, ain't nobody doing nothing crazy like that to, that I know of. I just be chilling at home, taking bubble baths, and then going back on the road. Like, <laughs> Did you believe that prior? Before becoming a celebrity? <laughs> Listen, I, around 2012, I was a conspiracy theorist. Oh. I was a conspiracy theorist. I'm not going to lie. Like, I be, I got super deep into aliens and all sorts of shit. So, yeah, that was one of the things I was like, what's going on out there? I wondered. You know, it's easy to believe when you're not a part of it. But now that you're in it, it's like, man, ain't nobody doing nothing crazy. I don't here. know. Your, 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 <laughs> hair, your hair look like it's throwing up some devil signs or something, Lizzo. I think they're going to twist this on the internet. Yo, once I wore like this Christian Cohen dress to like an iHeart, you know, performance. I had like a jingle ball or something and it was white and black checkers. And they were like, oh, she's in the Illuminati now. She's got white and black checkers. I said, I just like the dress. Right. Like, <laughs> That's when you made it, though, when you in the Illuminati, because right. they don't just let anybody in. <laughs> Listen, OK, let me dust my shoulders off there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Cardi B also, um, uh, here's another rumor. Whispered that she wants to eat your pussy. Now, how did you answer that? Let me tell you something. 
this is the funniest person. Like we were sitting there, she was like, okay, now whisper into Lizzo's ear. And it was the first time we had to do that because we just been kind of chatting. And she was like, I want to eat your pussy. <laughs> when I say I died laughing, this girl is so funny to me. I, <laughs> after that, the director split us up. She was like, okay, y'all. <laughs> She said, y'all can't stand next to each other no more. We're going to have to do this in post. <laughs> well, how do you know she was joking, Lizzo? I mean, why are you just assuming that was a joke? To be honest with you, I can't tell if she was joking or not. Because you know she always talk about big girl pussy. She always talk about it. She say, pussy that wet like a big bitch. <laughs> Listen, you think, I've been keeping track records of this like yeah. she talks about it all she said you know how big girls have like wetter vagina <laughs> she talks about fat girl pussy all the time and she got that tongue so who knows who knows maybe the rumors are true rumors part two <laughs> <laughs> so you just laughed you so crazy girl <laughs> she like but no like, for real so crazy <laughs> i know i was like uh it got, it got a little milky down there now how many other songs have you written <laughs> since rumors was written back in february <laughs> sorry i can't skip a little that. milky? <laughs> so she made you wet? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the WAP remix? A little milky cereal. <laughs> With Lizzo? <laughs> wow. WAP part two, bitch. Yeah, no, it was a little, it was a little wet down there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so what other songs have you written since February, since, you know, during this whole lockdown? <clears throat> I've written like 140 songs. Damn. Wow. Um, yeah, because I, I write a lot and um, I finish songs. Like, I'll be in the studio and... I have a two a day mentality. People think that I'm crazy, but when we get in there, even if it's my first day with a producer and writers, I'm like, we gotta get two songs. Like, I I don't know why, but it's like that, that helps me balance my vibe. So if you think about it like that, I was writing songs over the summer when we were on lockdown on my, uh, I had a little home studio set up cause I was like, I gotta make this music. So I was writing songs there. And then I've been working since 20, 19, like the summer of 2019. So I got a lot of songs. I write songs about everything though, y'all. So <laughs> I write songs about my favorite sandwich. I wrote a song about hair. What's your favorite my, sandwich? Uh, a wig. My favorite sandwich. I like BLTs. I use, so I'm a vegan now. Okay. So I used to love BLTs. So now I do, you know, vegan BLTs with uh, some avocado. So is that a black? What is BLT, a vegan BLT? BLT? With vegan bacon. Oh, they got vegan bacon? It's like vegan bacon. Yeah. yeah you know what's good? Like you should do uh, vegan cheese and green apple sandwiches. I like a little cheese. Oh, what the fuck? And try it. It tastes watermelon and mustard. I can't believe you just, <laughs> I can't believe you just shame me like that. <laughs> Wait, you said cheese and apples on a sandwich? Yes. It's delicious. I promise you. Well, you put, what else you put on there? Like mayo? No. Just it's that. just cheese and apples. Oh, you know what? It, All right. Uh, maybe a little mustard, but I'm telling you, I promise you, it's good. Not a little so mustard. So how has things Ooh, changed Jesus. for you since being vegan? Because I find that being vegan does, like, clear your mind more and make you feel, like, just more energetic. So how has it been for you? Wait, Angela, you vegan? Not all the time, but I go through, oh, okay. like, I be vegan for like a couple of months and then I'll eat a little bit of chicken. So now I eat chicken, like, either once or twice a week at the most. And then the rest of the time, right. I don't. Well, I, you know, for me, I, it's been a, a dream of mine. I don't know if y'all know, in, in the news, like years ago, there was this like black lady, she was like 80 years old, she lived in Miami, and but she looked like 35 mm -hmm. because she was a raw vegan and she would grow all of her fruits and vegetables, everything she ate, she grew herself and she would drink her water, her rainwater. She would clean it and distill it and, and she would drink that. And she looked incredible. And I remember watching that when I was younger and being like, that's the goal. I was like, by the time I'm 50, I want to be fully vegan. I want to mm -hmm. have a garden and I want to walk around butt booty naked in my garden every single day and pick my breakfast. So this has been a long time in the making. I, I realize it's not for everybody. Do you right. know what I'm saying? But now that I'm finally here, it feels amazing. Like, I feel lighter, yeah. like your veins, your veins are just a little lighter after eating what, you know, the substitute of something that would be meat. It's like, I don't even feel as heavy as I would have if I had eaten the meat version. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, you know what people are going to say next? People are going to say, oh, Lizzo is, you know, eating better because she doesn't want to be a big girl anymore. Yo, you know, that's the thing that really bothers me is people think that, I don't really like myself. 
Because that's what that's rooted in. It's rooted in fat phobia that even though that I'm this body positive person and, you know, I'm promoting self-love that deep down inside, I don't actually like myself. So I'm going to change myself. And that's the part that hurts my feelings because I really genuinely do love my body and I love myself. And trust me, I've been working out, eating clean for years now, and I'm still fat. I'm healthy, but I'm fat. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like if I wanted to change that, I have access to so much shit that I could I could go and get work done. I could do this and do that. But I like myself, so I'm not going to change myself. And people who do change themselves, cool. They change themselves because they want to. And this is what I want to do. And also, too, you represent for a, a lot of people, and a lot of people see themselves in you. So do you feel like you'd be letting them down if you did decide to go out there and do that? Not necessarily. I feel like, you know, I don't want people to believe in me. I want them to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like no matter what any celebrity or any influencer does, it shouldn't change how you feel about yourself and what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like people put a lot of stock into celebrity and, and their choices, and then they get let down. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, that's a human being. Mm -hmm. They're gonna let you down cause they not gonna always do what you wanna do. You can't control them. So the only thing you can control is yourself. So you need to think of yourself as a celebrity. You need to think of yourself as your influencer, your role model. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Well, I'm a huge Lizzo fan. I want to say that just from the very beginning. So I'm really happy for you. And I'm excited for some new music. So does this mean an hey. album is coming? What's the deal with that? Ha -ha. You know, I'm an album artist. You know, I put out bodies of work. I put out body, yaddy, 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 yaddy yeah. of work. So <laughs> I, got, I got music coming soon. I don't have the story yet. Mm -hmm. I don't have the songs exactly, but it's coming together. And so you're going to hear, her. listen, I'm here. I'm back. You can't get rid of me. Can you introduce you can't get rid of me. Can you introduce the new song then? <laughs> Rumors featuring Cardi B. You go for it because we're actually world premiering it <laughs> all morning here it. That's on right. iHeart. So <clears throat> this is a world premiere, premiere from your girl Lizzo. Lizzo, I thought she was on hiatus. I thought she wouldn't come back. Bitch, I'm back, back, and I ain't going nowhere, where with a brand new banger called Rumors featuring Cardi B. Oh, let's go. That's right. And Lizzo, we can't wait to talk to you when the album drops where you can be in studio and have a longer conversation. And I can't wait for Cardi to respond to this interview because I want to know if she was serious or not. Yep. Ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, we love you, Lizzo. All right, Lizzo, peace. Bye. <laughs>